All right, guys, it's Barry's birthday today, and he drank a lot of Jack Daniels last night, and he is still fucking out of it. Out of it. I'll have some people to come in the chat. That's what I'm saying. I just uh, I got up about three hours ago there, Don, and um, he hit the Jack Daniels last night, and he is fucking out of it. He's gone, missing in action. How you on there, Thunder? So his air comes on. He's just passed out, man. He had a big drink last night. And uh, he hasn't drunk in a while, you know what I mean? Like, he hardly ever fucking drinks. I know what people say he drinks all the time, he, he doesn't. So, he hadn't even drank beer for a while, and he had that Jack Daniels yesterday, and I think it knocked him on his fucking ass. <laughs> but he should be up soon, we'll go next door when he's up. You gotta hear him. We done our first uh, Google Hangouts last night, but we had a bit of technical difficulties. There's a little lag and stuff like that. That will happen to me too, that's why I don't buy it. Yeah, well, that Jack Daniels will knock you about. I drank a whole bottle of uh, Johnny Walker yesterday and about fucking 10 beers. And I was alright. I was fine. I'm still drinking now. And like I said, Barry doesn't usually drink, mate, so it really knocks him on his ass. I remember one time we were in um, El Gecko Bar in Cebu there, and he only had, I don't know how he got so drunk so fast, so that, I guess he didn't eat. There you go, face runner. I guess he didn't eat, but he was sitting on the bar stool. This is outside. And um, he fell asleep, and he fell off and sp split his head open, man. Look, he's on the ground, there's blood everywhere. I said, Barry, what happened, mate? And all the girls had to get him up and they bandaged his head up and chucked him in a taxi and sent him home. But yeah, he smacked his noggin hard, man. I heard it. Blood everywhere. All right, we've got three thumbs up, 14 people in there. How you going, Michael? It's been going down. You guys should come on when we do the... Uh, Google Hangouts. Come on and have a chat. If you know how to do it. That beer. Yeah. It's five o'clock somewhere in the world, mate. Michael, so I'm celebrating uh, <laughs> Barry's birthday. So he probably won't even drink today. I already done himself from last night. He might, I don't know. He was pretty drunk last night. Pretty habit. And he went to bed fairly early, so I don't know if he'd done a late, 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 late show, like he usually does. Yeah. <coughs> oh, what's that? <coughs> so I sent the girl home, boys. Gil's gone home for a few days. So I've got the place to myself. Might be able to do some wild shit. <laughs> Might be able to get those dancing girls in here. My face right as I was saying, he hit the, uh, the Jack Daniels last night and I think it really knocked him about. He doesn't drink that much. So. Even when we go out, if we go out to the bars and stuff, he won't, he won't drink that much beer, eh? He's lucky to have three or four for the whole night. And he might get like a, 
Jack Daniels and Coke, that's about it. He doesn't sit there and slam them down like I do. He's a cheap drunk man. Take him out in the town, buy him a couple of beers, he's a cheap drunk. Doesn't need too much to get rocking. He probably won't get up to fucking one o'clock, I reckon. I was going to hear the aircon on next door, so that means he hasn't woken up yet, because when he wakes up, he turns the aircon off. But the aircon's still going. <laughs> so that face runner. Jack don't work for me, I'd fight a tree. Garbage cans, whatever. <laughs> I'm usually pretty good on the piss, man. I don't, I don't really get violent or anything like that. But if someone pissed me off, I could easily change pretty quickly. Are you doing damage control for Barry? Well, he's passed out. Like I said, he had a big drink last night. His early celebration for his birthday. So, he's out cold. We wake up with a sore head. I think he drank a third of the bottle or half of it, I'm not sure. I was already drinking Red Horse, but I already drank my bottle, but I was going to mix that with Johnny Walker. Kind of, let's get these pubs up. I can't believe there's 16 of his in here and there's only seven thumbs up. It's a go. Hi, Jay, long time, no beauty. How's it going? How's it going there, mate? Gee, that's been a long time. I haven't been doing much. I've got, I've got three YouTube channels, so I'm more focused on my other channel, not the Real Deal channel. I have another channel, which uh, which I do other stuff on, so I'm usually doing videos on that. And if I'm not doing that, I'm usually training. What happened to that crazy guy, preacher, homeless guy, half that man? Who's that, John McKay? Who, who are you talking about there? Are you talking about... The hobo. Yeah, yeah, PV. You know, some people are saying he's going back to America. Some people are saying he's still here. So I don't really know, to be honest with you. Some say um, uploaded a video in Angeles City, but apparently that was an old one from you know six months ago or something like that. So I don't know where he is. Did Roberto make Jew on his bounty? What bounty is that, Michael? I, I don't really know what the bounty is. Was that the one where he offered, um, how's it going for a piece of trouble? Is that the one where he offered um, Barry's girlfriend $500, $500 to leave him? Is that the bounty you're talking about? Enlighten me. Which is only like 27,000 pesos, it won't last long. That's the only bounty I know of. He's on Big Kev's channel and um, I know about it. That's pretty odd though, that's really strange, you know. Why would you get in contact with, try to get in contact with someone's girlfriend and say, I'll give you money if you leave your boyfriend? That's just ridiculous. Please let people come to me. Anyway, she was pretty upset about that, actually. She wasn't happy about it. Um, for some reason, Barry's phones, I don't know, when he tries to go on Big Kev's show, he tries to talk, but you can't hear, you can't hear him. Remember, they were just offering her a way to escape. Yeah, but she doesn't want to escape. She was begging for him to, to come back, to come here and live with him. You know, she was chasing him. You know, she told a few porky pies or something like that and done something that Barry didn't like. And then um, Barry put her in time out for about a month and she was just messaging him for the whole month saying, oh, I want to come over there from Manila. So Barry sent her money so she could pay for a ticket. I think it was two and a half thousand or something or some shit plus food. And she put the boat over in and paid for a taxi to come from the um, port down to here. Trolls don't know Barry, they don't have the funds to travel. John, any travel plans coming up? 
videos. Yeah, yeah, there will be. But I've been to a lot of places, I just haven't filmed it, mate. Like I said, I've been out of the loop for, oh, I don't know, what is it, eight months or something. So I've been busy working and stuff, focusing on another channel. So I haven't had time to, um, well, I have, I just haven't, I haven't been bothered with it. I stayed out of the fucking bullshit for a while, you know what I mean? Now I seem to be back into it. It is fun, I like, I, I miss the old uh, vlogging and stuff like that, and meeting up with other expats and shit like that. But I've met a lot of expats out and about. I've had people come up to me just out of nowhere in the malls and say, hey, Jay, you know, you sort of look at them and say, is this guy, <laughs> is he gonna be my friend, or is he angry at me, or, you know? Yeah, the third channel is to do with crypto, but don't take my advice. It's very high risk and high reward. You can lose a lot of money, you can make a lot of money too. It's very, very volatile, basically, so... <laughs> Did I take roids? No. No, I didn't take roids. I'm a needle phobic, mate. I haven't been to the gym in... 12, 15 years. I was actually thinking about joining next month. Hey Jay, are you keeping your apartment when you go home? Are you coming back after a month or so? Yeah, if I go home, of course, yeah, I'll pay, I'll pay the rent, I'll pay Matt the rent up for a few months or so, pay my electricity bill up and then turn the fridge right down. Because I've got a lot of shit here, man. I bought, I'll show you what I bought, man. I'll show you. See, when Matt rents these apartments out, they're just stock standard, basic furniture, you know, like your tables, your chairs. It had a little fridge in it, but uh, I didn't like the little fridge. It's one of those small uh, Panasonic fridges. Um, it's a good fridge, but don't get me wrong, I don't like how you have to take it out, you know, every month and defrost them and take all your food out. So I bought this one here. This one is an LG Smart Inverter compressor so it just defrosts itself that cost me uh, 22,000 pesos for this one here and Matt had an older air conditioning in here let me just Matt had an older air conditioning in here let me turn the camera around like this so I can hold on a second guys oh no I can't oh hang on okay there we go so Matt had an old air conditioning in here. It was cold as shit, but it was a bit loud for me. So I went and bought this new Panasonic one here. This one was, uh, I think this was 16K or 15K, if I remember. And then I bought this stereo system here. Let me just clean the lens here. Let me just clean the lens. So I bought this Sony stereo system here. And I bought that TV as well. The Sony system was about 36k. And I bought this sharp TV here. It's just it's not a smart TV. You know, it didn't have a TV in here. So I bought that too as well. And I also bought the good old water heater, Panasonic. That was 6k and come with free installation. So I bought that as well. But basically everything else was already in here. You know what I mean? Hold on a minute, let me just turn this camera around. Hold on, let me catch up with these comments, guys. I wasn't reading them. Okay. Michael Farlon. I haven't really figured out at Hangouts. Yeah, this last night was the first time. Yeah, well... Sometimes there is technical issues with it. You know, sometimes people get their speakers on and their codes back. Let me just read these comments, guys. Hold on. Okay. And Bam, I thought you were me. Yeah. Okay. So you got rooftop swamp calls there. Face runner, what's rooftop swamp calls? What is that? Basic accommodation is all required in the Philippines. You show your wealth and people will target your belongings of your life even. Yeah, well, that's it. See, I've had the big flash condos for 20k a month and all that shit in the city. Like, rooftop fucking pool and all that sort of shit. You know, 
me personally, unless you own it, it's a fucking waste of money, man. You know, I pay 6K here. That's like one fourth of the price of me renting a condo. So all up, oh no, I've got the same heater. Yeah, they're good, man. I love having a hot shower. Jay, you should get a lightning and power socket safety switch put in the, just like in Australia. No, no, it has. It's got its own breaker. The hot, if you're talking about the hot water system, it's got its own breaker, right? And it's, got a, it's got an earth switch. Okay, it's a bit different than back home. So you can't get zapped. It's got the safety points in there and stuff like that. So you're pretty much right. I can get the chat up because it'll lap you to see the chat. Yeah, that's it. Oh my god, you're talking too fast here. That's the electrical safety laws now in Australia. You know, I used to install uh, solar systems. I used to run my own company and pay electricians to store them and shit, so to change all the uh, switchboards and stuff. Yeah, so I haven't been back to Australia for about a year yet, so I wouldn't know the electrical rules and all that sort of stuff. I do tend on going back soon, I don't know, maybe the next three or four months, I don't know. But I'll only be gone for about a month, and I'll be back. And at the same time, the three year thing will fucking reset again as well, so we'll come back. Go yeah, visit my family, man, my mum and dad, my sister, my dog. I haven't seen them for one year, man. It's been a long time between drinks. I'll just get this chat up. Really? You lost a fridge and a fucking TV? I haven't had that problem here yet. No, I haven't, no, I haven't had no problem like that. I had the power go out once every now and then for about an hour or half an hour, but that's about it, man. But no lightning strikes. That'll be a piss of me if you lost your fridge and your TV in one go. Barry's got a surge protector over there. I don't really worry about that stuff. Yeah, it can be costly. That's what I mean, so I've got all this shit here, and I've spent a fair bit of money. Oh, and also concreted out the front there too, as well. I'll show you actually. I've got. I've got all this concreted out here. Now the reason why is before there was all uh, dirt there and it used to bring dirt into the house. But Matt's actually building a uh, uh, roof over the top here. So he put an outdoor sitting and a barbecue out here. Fucking proper barbecue. You know, I want a gas barbecue. Shit. Oh. And all that concrete plus labour was only two and a half thousand pesos, man, like fucking 45 bucks or something, mate. And that's with three guys doing it, labour and everything in the concrete. Mm -hmm. Do that in Australia, man, it cost you a thousand bucks. You're living in Bin Laden's compound. Yeah, it's a good little compound. It's got barbed wire all around it, big fence. Um, it's got three CCC TV, for, I'll show you actually, outside here. Matt had these installed last week. I'll show you if you can see them. There's a camera up there, up there in the corner, I don't know if you can see it. And then you got these two facing towards the street and the gate up there. They got night vision and stuff on them too as well. So there's three cameras here, there's four cameras here, and there's another four cameras up there, as you can see, on the other house, facing towards here as well. So, Matt got that installed, and it records all week, 
and then deletes and just keeps recording the box and everything so you have an apartment there. So if you want to be on candid camera, just come on round. next door advertising apartments pointed out where you guys live. The guy next door. No, it doesn't matter mate. It's not hard to find us. Like you go out to the city on a Friday, Saturday night, you'll run into us there. It's not a big place. Running around in the middle of the night. Where are you? Come out of those fucking woods. No, nobody get that. You're using thermo. Yeah, I think that the. I don't know. Map. He paid a fair bit for him, um, but they are night vision as well. Like I was in the other apartment. So you, you got my apartment. You got Barry's apartment. And the next apartment's actually a call center. Like twenty men. 20 seat call center, decked out in there. All right, he's got this screen set up, monitor, which is split like that, it's got the four cameras on there. And we look at it at night time, and it's, yeah, it's clear as, you can see everything. When you look at the cameras at night time, you can see the red beam coming out of them. But we didn't ask to put them in, Matt just put them in. And he's got some over in that house too as well. This, this whole street is fucking covered in cameras. People just don't know. Like, before I didn't lock the gate, I had, um, I had fucking someone steal me fucking girlfriend's underwear off the fucking clothesline, man. And I bought that underwear too, a brand new, nice red ones, actually. And they steal your slippers, your thongs, you know, anything that's not bolted down, they'll fucking pinch it, I tell you. Now, well, upstairs, the call center's still there. Upstairs, Matt's thinking, well, he was going to make it one big, big house upstairs, but now he's thinking about splitting it in two apartments. He's not quite sure yet. He's just tossing up what he wants to do. Hey, big Kev. Should have come on the show last night, man. We had a bit of technical difficulties, but I, I sent you a link over. I think you may have been asleep. Big ones go faster. Night vision. I had no luck. Lost a fishing boat. Fuck. Where was that face running? Is this in Australia? Bama stole the undies. No, he wasn't here then. It was a while ago. It was Kim's underwear, actually. Yeah, fancy stealing someone's underwear, you know what I mean? Like, fuck, yeah, lacy, fucking nice, sexy red ones, too. Pay about 400 pesos for those underwear. I'll be in Lapu Lapu in July and August. Yeah, that's, that's where uh, Ren and that live. Michael says I pay 5,000 pesos for rent here. That's not bad. Whereabouts are you, Michael? A great deal, Matt rents them out for you. You and Bam have got a good deal. Yeah, we do, man. I'm, I'm happy. When I came here, I was, I was, I was nearly going to go get another fucking condo in the city, and I thought, nah, fuck it. Matt was telling me about his apartment, so I rang Matt and said, "Is there apartments available?" He said, "Yeah, yeah. His address. Just go down there and go see Judith. She'll let you in." And you know, six k. They're actually worth more than six k. To be honest with you, afford you get. It's this Barry's MGTOW gay lover, Barry's lover. That's creative. Happy birthday to my dearest Barry Lee. Miss you much, honey, hugs and kisses. But dear. Yeah. Please dump that girl. Do you my hug for me? Uh, he's asleep. Yeah. G'day, Slayer Ride. 
uh, I saw him dancing in the night wearing red panties on his head. Fuck you guys come up with some shit. I used to date our ladies by. <laughs> God. Didn't they like go away for a while or something like that? Someone was saying, I think it was uh, Dave. I think Dave said he went away for a while or something like that. So I don't mind Dave's channel, right? I might listen to it, you know what I mean? I just don't like the other clans that come on and fucking poison his fucking show. Jay, please explain the difference between a yobo and an ochre. I don't know what an ochre is, man. I've never heard that before. A yobo is just a hodo, a bum. Hey, big Kev, we're gonna do a we're gonna do a Google Hangouts later, man. If you want to come come on. We had a couple of subscribers come on last night. One donated a hundred dollars. I think it was for Barry's birthday. I'm not quite sure. I don't remember what it was for. I'm sure Kev will come on. Check! Yeah. Yeah. Not you, I was talking to the dog. I was talking to the dog. Fucking dogs coming in my yard. Brian, ever think of buying a motorbike, some kind of transportation? I did think about that, but man, to be honest with you, I don't really want to drive around here or ride around here. Just, the traffic is just, man, I'm cracked the shits. There's people just going everywhere, you know what I mean? There's no road rules here. So, I was thinking about getting myself a little motorbike, but then I thought, you know what, I just, it's easy for me to, and you know, I'm drinking piss all the time, I can't be. Jump on a fucking scooter and drive in this traffic. What's that, Kev? It's, it's 9.53 pm now, it's getting late, isn't it? We're going to do it later on, you'll probably be in bed by then. Bicycle's easy. I just catch taxis, man. I catch taxis everywhere. I just jump in a taxi, sit back, so take me there. It's only cheap, man. I can get a motorbike, they're only about. Like, I don't know, 80, 90 K for brand new motorbike, but I wouldn't use it. You know what I'm saying? Matt's got a good motorbike here. I pay for rides, I pay for lawsuits, fines, that's it. And Matt's got a decent bike here actually, he said I could ride us, but it's a bit big for me. If I was going to get transportation, I'd seriously look at getting a Hilux or something like that. Big four drive. Big fuck off bull bar. And I'd have a, um, like at the taxis here, they have a, a cam, a dash cam. So if any accidents happen, they can't go, oh, it's your fault, you're the foreigner. And I'd say, hey, mate, check out this fucking video right here. You jump in front of me, fucking car. Hope my dear Barry returns back to the States once he's incarcerated again. We can make deep passionate love. He's not going back to the States, man. This is his home. He ain't going nowhere. 
doesn't want to go back. He's happy to live out his life here. Yeah, I think he's a troll too as well. The name like that, Barry Migtail, gay lover. Barry's lover. <laughs> well, a lot of people love him. Well, the truck drivers give you their cell. Some of them do. See, I know them all here, man. I, I go down the street here, they all know me. Hey, cool, you Jay. Everyone knows me around here. It wouldn't be hard to fucking find me, I'm telling you that right now. Just go ask the tricycle drivers. I'll say, yeah, he lives up here. Well, I've had no problem with the guys here, man, at all. They've been really good. The only problems you have is with the women, depending on which women you run around your own. Like, you, you get, like, 10 messages a day from fucking women here, and you, you just, it just gets overrated. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've got a few of them on call too as well. They're always going past here, man. You just go, wait, pull up. So I give them 100 pesos to take me down the street. That's why they like me, mate. They eat the, the, the big money. Just send this fucking message. So I sent the girl home. She's, she's going to Dimageddy. Back in a couple of days. Yeah, I try to be relaxed. Actually, I'm always relaxed. This is the Philippines. Oh, leave me alone. But I'm glad Barry's got himself sorted out next door there because fuck it, old mate, he's had a bad trot <laughs> over the last fucking. 12 months or so. You know, when he had his benefits cut off and shit. Fuck, man. For fucking months, man. What was that? Five months or something? Mm -hmm. No fucking profile saying now, like, Winter trying to call me. Someone's made a fake profile of LA Winter and using his phone and they're trying to call me. But I'm doing a fucking live stream. He's slowly getting there. That's the best apartment he's ever had, you know what I mean? He's gone out, he's got a lot of stuff over there, you know what I mean? He's like all his cleaning stuff. Just, you know, just all the little shit you need that you, you spend about 20, 30 mm -hmm. Fake LO fucking account. I know you're watching. I'm doing a live stream, man. Stop calling me. I'm not interested. Yeah, so all Barry needs to get is a TV and his laptop, and he's pretty much got everything over there. Hello, you know you haven't got a voice here, mate. You're lucky I don't fucking block you. You're lucky even fucking writing in this chat. <laughs> Bama come on always to Niebuhr Hut, man. I remember that. I remember that Niebuhr Hut. Fuck, man, that was a... Uh, man, when he, seen, when he showed me that, I thought, fuck, how much you paying for that? 1,500 pesos a month. And that was a fucking grass hut, man. If you dropped the phone, if you threw a cigarette or anything, that would have went up like fucking spear grass. What did you do for me, Hello? What did you do for me? What did you do for me? I'll tell you what. Since you reckon you're a millionaire, go donate to the trust fund, mate. I might let you on. Put a lazy hundred in there, and I might just let you on. Since you've got plenty of money.
If they didn't make me famous, mate, I was on YouTube before you was even fucking heard of. Yeah, so Barry has come a long way since the Nipa hut, man. That's fucking unreal. I really have no right place when he was living with that bird. What's her name? The whole. But I reckon they were fucking overcharging, though. Um, what was her fucking name? Someone tell me what her name was. Do you guys remember that girl in the hole he was staying with? I forgot. The one that had the house. It was like two fucking units. But anyway, she was charging him 10k a month. And I said, what the fuck, Barry? And I was talking to him on the phone. I said, why, why is she fucking charging you 10k to stay at the place? If you're not there, who else is, who is, who's paying the 10k? Yeah, Myra, that's it. Who's paying the 10k when you're not there? And why do you have to pay 10k? All you should do is say, hey, I'm your boyfriend. How about I buy all the fucking food and pay the electricity bill? I'm not fucking pay fucking 10k to stay with your fucking girlfriend in a house that's already owned. Fuck that shit. He was Tony Robinson. No, not that one. Not the Singapore work with the brother. That was his first girlfriend. Um, Lenora or something, I think her name was. That was the first one that he stayed with um, when he first got here. And the brother always just hit him up for cash and shit like that. Fuck that, give him nothing, mate. You know, I've been quite lucky. I've never had any... I haven't had many girlfriends. I haven't had many serious girlfriends here, man, to be honest with you. I had, I had one. Right? The other ones, one or two here and there, but it wasn't serious or anything like that. I've had a few flings, but nothing fucking serious. But none of their families ever asked me for fucking anything. At all. They never asked me for money. Anything like that. He was a newbie and he was gullible, yeah. Well, he told me that he was asking him for about 2,000 pesos a day. And Barry was just gullible and just giving it to him. Because Barry sold his truck and everything before he came over. So he had a bit of cash in him. And he was giving him about 1,000 or 2,000 pesos a day, man. Fuck. I'm here at home, I don't even spend that, man. Not even if I drink all day. You know? I'm lucky to spend five or six hundred even home. If I go out, that's a different story, man. I fucking spend heaps. I don't know fucking how, but I do. It's usually in clubs, man, because you're paying, you're paying Aussie prices just about for a fucking bourbon and coke or a scotch and coke. I mean, some places are 300 peso, 250 peso. That's almost the same price as in Australia. Almost. You know, so you're looking at about six, seven bucks a drink. Yeah, man, 2,000 pesos, that was getting through the day. I don't even spend that. If you go shop, like, I went shopping the other day and I got a shitload of stuff, man. I only spent, like, 1,600 pesos. I got, like, a week's worth of food, man. What's that? 30 fucking two dollars? You know, but if you just sit around the home or just go down the street or something like that, man, you're not going to spend 2000 let's just buy it. What's this? You go, man. He never paid 10000 for anything in his life. He lied about that. What are you talking about, Dick Hammer? What are, you, what are you talking about? I don't understand what you're on about there. Besides, I like how it came on anyway because this isn't a fucking, it's not a Google Hangout. It's just a live stream. I can't, I can't let anyone on, anyone on. It's just a live stream. It's not a Google Hangout. I can't send people a link and say, hey, jump on. It's just a normal live stream.
He paid no rent with Myra. She rescued him from sleeping in the chicken shed. Dikama, you don't know that man. He did pay rent. You know? Remember when the guys are saying, oh, Jay's going back to Australia, now Jay's going to pay for the apartment, he's going to stay here, we'll bang next when he's next door to his own apartment. He pays Matt rent, mate. He, he pays, man. He paid me for staying here. You know? Stayed here for about three weeks. You know? He paid for food. He gave me money for staying. He didn't ask him for it, he just gave it to me. Now we share the internet here because I've got, I've got the internet actually hooked up here. I've got 500 gigabyte a month, 10 megabytes per second, and the Wi-Fi goes straight through the wall into his apartment. So I said to him, there's no point in going and getting another internet, just share mine and go home with it. So it's 1,600 pesos, so half of that each month. they could stop all the crap. Chicken, pork, veggies and fruits. Eat off fish. I had fish the other day, man. I cooked uh, shallots, shallots, garlic, butter, a bit of pepper, and fried it up in a fry pan on a better rice. Mostly pretty good cook, guys. Chicken curry the other night. I paid 1,899. Yeah, mine's 1600 but if I want to up it, it's 1899 and for one unlimited. Which if Barry gets an Xbox, I'm going to have to put it unlimited because he's going to use a lot of fucking data. Trump is in the summit with Kim Jong-un looking for peace. Is Riff Raff Radio looking for the same? <laughs> Man, they, they, them guys in that show, you know, Think they're going after people because they you know it's just ridiculous it really is the shit they're going about especially that popeye and that fucking john day man they have fucking got to be the biggest fucking idiots in the philippines genre you know it's, it's stupid and you can't fix stupid guys they are fucking stupid you know they do the dumbest shit they say the dumbest shit they think they're the fucking youtube police or something man. especially that fucking popeye he thinks he's the fucking YouTube. he's not going to stand for it who gives a fuck what you're going to stand for, fucking Popeye? No one gives a shit about you your fucking opinions and what you fucking think. No one gives an absolute fucking shit about you. What's funny is foreigners go camping there in the jungle. I wouldn't do that. Try to explain camping in a tent to a Filipino. Ah, <laughs> uh, so true, Jay. They're gutless. LA, look, listen to me, mate. If you are really LA, which I don't think you are, this is a live stream. It's not a fucking Google Hangouts. I can't bring anyone on. It's just a normal live stream. I made you big, Jay, you know it. I pushed your career here on YouTube. What are you talking about, mate? Before you even come along, I already had 4,000 subscribers. You didn't fucking help me out at all. At all, mate. I had a very large audience before you even came on the fucking scene. And you had no audience to bring to the table anyway. What were you going to direct towards my channel? This is fucking true. This is fact. Fact. It's not my opinion, it's fact. Hmm. Two grumpy old men that had a bad time in the Philippines back in the 80s. What about Popeye? I think his wife divorced him. He's such a fucking asshole. Took her back to the States and she fucking left him. He was just bitter. He's going after e beggars. Well, Popeye, I got a little trust fund there, mate. It's going to be used for lots of fun in the next coming months. Buyers remorse. Let me tell you a story, guys, right? This is fucking true. You can take it out of one. <coughs> they had direct flights to Cairns, right? With Philippines Airlines, right? There's a reason why, because there was a lot of Filipinos, obviously, in Cairns. I don't think they uh, got any more. Someone said they took it away, but they did, right? 
Gina Hammond, young Filipinos, that are with fucking 60, 70 year old men that live in Cairns. Do you know how many of them go out and fuck other guys? Including me myself. I haven't got enough toes and fingers on my hands and feet to count how many fucking married Filipinos I fucked in Cairns that are with 70 year old fucking men and they're like in their 20s. That's not fucking right, man. Fucking plenty. So, my advice is, don't get taken back to your country. Mm. Actually, if you're fucking that age, you shouldn't be with a girl that's fucking 20 years old, 19 years old. That age is stupid. Why not get yourself a girl that's around, you know, early 30s, late 30s? Even 40s, they still look good, man. What's that face from a... Was that face from a... Yes, Jay, I was watching you a year ago or so. Jay, you have subs, many, many, many. What I do? Man, there's people still subscribing to that channel and I haven't done fucking content on there for fucking a while. Just going up and up. This channel here, actually, the other day it had two, 240 subs, right? Now it's got 200, or 201. And I thought, what the fuck's going on here? How can fucking 40 people unsub? But I went into the back office there and YouTube got a fucking message up there saying all the view counts and subscriber counts are missing. We're trying to resolve this problem, rah, rah, rah. So they've actually got it all mixed up. It happens every now and then, it resets. It's usually behind a few days, 24 hours. And the metrics reset. Ah. Ah, trying to monkey branch to better guys. No more than 15 or 20 years ago, younger than you. Mm. You know more, yeah. Yeah, like that's just ridiculous, you know. I, I, don't get me wrong, it might be lots of fun. Maybe I'll be a 70 year old man and a fucking 19 year old girl. But I won't be taking it back to my fucking country, I know that. I, I'm telling you, this is fact, man. These girls just go out and fucking play up, man. They wait till they get their fucking. Um, Resident visa, takes them three years in Australia. And then, um, I, they're gone, they're gone. But these girls too as well, you can just see the, the, the slut in them, you know what I mean? They're not the average Filipino, you can tell that they, these guys got them out of bars or something, man. They had the mongrel in them, you know? The real mongrel, cunty, fucking slutty look about them and the way they act too. Great fucks though. Hi Jay, how are you? Happy birthday, Bambo. Yeah, well, he's still asleep. He drank a bottle of Jack Daniels last night and he's fucking out of it. JD's travel. YouTube is full of bugs at the moment. They are rolling out of new features, much like every update. They have fucked up everything. <laughs> they keep changing the fucking um, metrics and shit all the time, see? One month for my other channel, man. Alright, this is how much they change shit. On my other channel, I pulled 900 and forty five dollars in AdSense in one month. Now that's a fuck a lot. Now next month was like sixty bucks. Like what the fuck? You know? And you got the same views. You know what I mean? They fuck around with shit all the time, they always fuck it up. There's a new fucking decentralized uh, platform coming out <coughs> that I know of where you can't ban people, you can't block people, you can't complain. People can say whatever the fuck you like. Right? That's coming out soon. So when that comes up, I'll direct you guys over to there. So it's basically an open slaughter. Do what you want. You can't report people, you can't do anything. You put fucking whatever you fucking like and say whatever you fucking like. Hi Naomi, how are you? Yeah, so when that platform becomes available, I'm only shifting all my stuff over to there. Fuck YouTube. I'm sick of whinging bitches fucking complaining. I don't like what he said. My Filipino wife flew to Canada with her own money. We Skyped for two years prior in 2006. She's 50 and sexy as hell. She don't look a day over 35. Well, that's it, man. Filipinos look fucking younger than... You know, if they're 30, they look like they're fucking 20. No proper 
preparation yet for the party. Wake up Barry. Now, I'm not gonna wake him up, he, he's asleep. He just, he's a fucking sleeper, mate. He just fuck out of there. If you have to wake up, you have to shake him to wake him up, man. Oh, I'm gonna message from the girl. She's in the bus. Yeah. Send me photos. Oh man, I better reply back to show the shit. Hold on a minute, guys. She's on the bus to do Maggie. Three days by myself, boys. Might have to get some more women in here and do some shows, huh? Get my lap dancing. <laughs> I'm sure she watches this. Jenny will dog me in, mate. Jay had girls here. My grandfather used to pour cold water in my ear to wake me up. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> he's a lazy bane. Yeah, we drank a, he drank some Jacks last night. First time he's drank in a while. First time he's drank in fuck, I think. Yeah, a long time, actually. So he'll be out for a while, mate. I'm surprised if he doesn't wake up to about one o'clock in the afternoon. So usually he does a morning show and stuff, so I thought, fuck, he's going to get up, I so I might as well do one. See what one's up to you. Another thing too as well about old, old, old men with young, young women. It looks pretty ridiculous in your country. Like if you're walking down the street, like even I'd feel embarrassed, you know what I mean? I'm not even that age. Now if I do that to him, he'll crack the fucking shits. Honestly, one day what we should do, actually what we should do man, I reckon we'll get away with this. When he falls asleep on the couch, sometimes he sleeps on the couch, to get another, another guy in here, right? Lift up the couch and carry it out on the fucking street and put it on the street, man. And he won't even wake up. He'll wake up eventually and be like, oh, he'll be on the couch in the middle of the fucking street. <laughs> That's how fucking dead to his bed when he sleeps. You have to, well, I'm telling you, you have to really shake him to wake him up. You can carry him out on the couch and go chuck him out in the street. He wouldn't even fucking know it. We should do that, that would be fucking funny actually. I'm gonna fucking do that. I am gonna do that. Alright, so we'll see, look, how many girls gone? Fucking dishes are here, man. You know, there's one thing I fucking hate, and it's fucking dishes, man. I hate that shit. She was late to get to the bus this morning, so she had to get up early. I took her down to the taxi. I said, oh, I'll. she goes, oh, you're gonna have to do them dishes, I gotta go. And I said, no, alright. And I hate doing dishes. Fuck, I hate doing dishes. I might even just leave me. <coughs> I might just leave there for three days until she comes back. And <laughs> no, I won't do that. I'll have to clean them up later. I'll wait for little Ian to come round and I'll say, Ian, clean those fucking dishes up. I'll give you a hundred pay soon. You'll do it. Yeah, I'll get it on video, Brian, for sure. It'll be funny shit. I'm telling you, we can do some magic to him when he's asleep. He won't wake up. What's this? Robert Madden, my friends, carried me out of my bed in a hotel in Singapore to another hotel, freaked me out when I woke up. That's cold. That's good. Get a new maid or two, maybe three. Well, I did have one. The girl that I'm with now, man, she's pretty cool. She, you don't have to ask her to do shit. She just does it. She just gets out and starts cleaning the house, does the dishes, washes the clothes. It's cheaper to keep them. I'll give you the hot tip. <laughs> it's cheaper to keep them. If you're out chasing pussy all the time, it, it can get expensive. You know, because you're fucking taking them out on dates, you're fucking buying lunch or dinner, you're catching a taxi there. Fuck man, I mean I was doing about two dates a day there for a while. And fucking hell, you, you end up spending a bit of money. Hire me to be your maid. 
Uh, you know what I mean? It's a big job. It's a big job in here. But now if you've got to handle it. You can find one you're compatible with, fucking keep up. See how it goes. My problem is with the weight is here. Um, I've, this one's alright actually, I can talk to it. Most of my, okay, I can't fucking talk to them. I don't, like, you can't have a fucking conversation. They're supposed to be your, your girlfriend's supposed to be like your best friend, you know what I mean? You can tell her anything. Most of these girls, in my opinion, this is just me, um, you can't have a fucking intellectual conversation. But the one I'm with at the moment, um, we talk all the time, which is good. So it's not just sex, man. You can go out and bang any fucking girl, man. You, know, you get pretty bored of that after a while. Well, I don't mean to tell them anything, but, you know, have a good conversation with them, you know what I mean? There's certain shit you probably wouldn't tell them, but... You know, like you fucked a sister or something like that. <laughs> I think my Barry lover didn't get beat up by that woman. What are you talking about? You know, you guys that make these fake accounts and say all this shit, man, you must have a lot of time on your hands. Some people are shy, that's why they don't talk. Oh, they talk all right. They all say that I'm shy. Don't you get them in the bedroom? That shyness goes away pretty fucking quickly. Filipinos are very horny now. They're gonna be the horniest out of all the Asian women. Even you, Naomi. Know they watch more porn here than anyone else. Mm. In the Yanni days, very, very horny girls. Just touches and just get wet. These trolls are fail. They, they got a lot of time in their hand, man. You know, if you're sitting there creating a fake account. You know, I've never done that. <laughs> I've never fucking ever created a fake account on YouTube and trolled people. Or on Facebook, anything. Never. Never done it. If I want to say something to someone, I say it on my fucking profile, my fucking face. I don't give a shit. <laughs> this hippie kid guy's not shy at all. Like this one fucking Filipina. She rocked up here the other night, actually, and I fucking told her, get the fuck out of here. She rocked up here in a fucking taxi at five o'clock in the morning, man. I didn't even invite her here. Smoking hot and shit, but man, I was just like, dude, you can't rock up. I'll make a stance on this. I tell him, do not come to my house unannounced. I don't like that shit. What is that? Pimple. Don't come to my house unannounced, you know what I mean? Just rocking up at my door. Fuck, I hate that. It's happened twice here. And um, I've just opened the door and just pointed at the taxi and told him, get back in that taxi and go. Because you know? if you let them in, they think they can do it all the time, see? I had two of them rock up here one time. Two of them! And I already had a woman in the fucking bed. See, I was fucking half drunk asleep in bed and uh, the next minute there's knock knock on the door. And I'm like, fuck. And I said to the girl, I said, oh, can you go? I thought it was fucking one of Matt's relatives or something. You know? Coming to ask me for something or get something or something. Yeah, the door's always locked. But anyway, knocking on the door and I told the girl, I said, can, can you answer the door? She's answered the door and she just let them straight into them, just walked straight in and they're both looking at, they're all looking at each other. I said, what the fuck are you doing here? I said, oh, we just come to hang out with you. And the other girl's looking like, who the fuck are these girls? And I'm thinking, oh, fuck, this is a shit fight. I've got three women in my fucking bedroom. And I just said, you two, get out of here. I said, you got to go. You can't just rock up to my house unannounced. I didn't invite you here. This is before I had the padlock on the gate, so the padlock gets locked every night now. It's open during the day, it's alright, but at night time, lock it. 
because if they do rock up, you know, they'll be stuck outside the front of the gate, they won't even get to the fucking front door. Oh, I'll have a message here. Certainly love hard, I better send one back. There we go, eh? They're very clingy. Mm. Oh yeah, they'll follow you everywhere. You walk outside, they'll fucking follow you. If you go to bar with your girlfriend, right, you get out for the night, she won't take her fucking eyes off you, man. Any girl that comes up to you and talks to you, she'll be like, who's that? I don't know. You're just talking to us. I don't know who the fuck that is. He's a fucking sleeper. Don't worry guys, I'm gonna do it. I'll get him real drunk one night, I'll get him fucking hammered, and I'll wait for him to fall asleep, and I'm gonna carry his bed outside, and I'm gonna put him out in the street. And I'm gonna film it, and I'll put that shit on YouTube. Fuck, oh, she was hot, she was in a girl just for passing the motorway. Man, there's a lot of hot girls in this neighborhood, guys. Like fucking smokers, man. They're all looking, they all walk past, they dress up and put their high heels on and their makeup on and they come past and shit before when you see them when they first hear. They were all dressed up, now they dress up and shit and walk past your house every day and they're looking in. But I've never ever fucked any girls within a fucking 3k radius of my fucking house. It's just too close to home, you know what I mean? Too fucking close to home. tells me I was never to the Philippines, she goes where I go. Yeah man, like before you go, well, I'm just going to go down the street, where are you going? What are you doing? I'm just going to go get some money, I'll be back. Uh, face run, I don't know about hostels close by. There's a few units today, like we've got these units here, match units, and there's another block just over there with some units as well, which are pretty nice, like, like a two minute walk away. So there's plenty of units, but not, not hostels. And they're more in the city areas. Got it here. Well, I haven't seen any out here anyway. I pretty much know this area pretty well. We plan to be there all of November. In Cebu, face running, you're going to be here in Cebu. Or Minganilia, or... Fuck, it's hot today, man. Fuck, it's hot. Cebu. Whereabouts in Cebu? Are you staying in the city or? Yeah, I want to go to Palawan too. I haven't been there yet. We're uh, watching 15 likes. Come guys, up those fucking likes. Put those likes up there. If you guys haven't liked yet, like. Give us a down vote. I can do something. Fuck. Any interaction is good action. Let me get that up. I think it's lagging. I think I might go to Angeles City um, in the next few months or so. Actually no, Todd Todd comes here in October, so I think me, Todd, and Barry are gonna to go to Angela City. So I'll try and catch up with Says on there too as well. 
I heard that Sez broke up, does anyone know? I heard Sez broke up with his, uh, with Lynn, is this, is this true? Does anyone know anything about that? Glenn Mabolo area. You got a lovely love area. I don't know Mabolo. I know the Queen's name, man. <laughs> Yeah, you heard the same? Where's all the action in Kvet Day? Do you hear much about the province? No, I don't know much about that one there, Brian. You won't tell me. It says same here. Wow, chismis. <laughs> yeah, that's what I heard. That's what's going around. And, um, you know, I've got a friend that's also a YouTuber that met says in Angeles City and said he's, he's out a lot. The, the, Society, high society nightclub that Lynn's never with him. Someone said they broke up or something like that. Lynn is hot. <laughs> but he's married to her. My wife and Lynn are good friends, but she shut down everything, even the phone. Oh, there you go. Well, maybe they did break up. I hope Dan McCarty a lot. Says. It says being in McCarty a lot. I don't know if he's still doing videos. Yeah, right. I didn't know that. I sent him a link to my new channel, actually, uh, yesterday. He usually says hello time to time. That's what I mean, you know, if you get married and you break up, man, it's fucking, it's pretty shit because you can't get a divorce. If you found a foreigner, then it's probably over. You'd be great co host. Yeah, it says it's a good luck. See, the thing is, that this is why I, I want to get married, alright? Because you can't have a divorce, right? And I know this American guy in Davao, and he, um, he married this girl when he came over here. Like too early. Fucking itchy nose, someone's talking about me. And they broke up, separated, right? They're still married, obviously. Now he met another girl, and the other previous wife was jealous, obviously, and uh, he was in bed with his other girl, and the fucking SWAT team come in, man. He was butt naked in bed with this fucking girl. They took him off to fucking jail, because it's a crime. And they just fucking, then they started extorting fucking cash out of him, you know what I mean? Fuck that shit. Some jealous bitch getting you locked up because she's fucking jealous and you broke up. That's fucked. He did one week ago, two weeks ago, and someone slipped his credit card and changed, charged bounce. I heard about that, man. That's not good. I never use fucking bank cards or credit cards here. I always get out cash. I don't even use ATMs here, man. Yeah, adultery, illegal. That's what I was looking for. That was the word, adultery. Means you get locked up when you've broken up with your fucking missus. In your bed with another girl. Fancy the police coming in. Imagine that in Australia, in America. You're under arrest! You're fucking someone else. You're like, get the fuck out of here. What sort of stupid look? Who is the dumb cunt in the Philippines that actually said, this is a great law, we've got to pass this. Yeah, I think this is really good, actually. You know, who the fuck in their right mind in Parliament goes, that's a fucking awesome law, let's pass it. That's fucking just dumb. I'll just read that and go, what the fuck is this nonsense? Get this shit out of here. Lock it up, people, because they're having a fuck and they're not with the girl anymore. That's just ridiculous. Some of these laws that get passed, even in my country, they're just fucking stupid. Fucking locking people up for fucking illegal in some American states, but not enforced. It's just strange. Preach, brother, preach. I might as well forget to pilot myself. But it is a stupid law, man. Like, come on. 
ever been to Thailand, Jay? No, I haven't been to Thailand. Can I get an amen? Amen. There's no God here. <laughs> There's no God here, boys. <laughs> Stay out of fucking churches. Don't go into them fucking things. They're the fucking robbers. Money is evil. Give it to us. You know, what the fuck? Run around their little bags, collect all the money. If it's evil, give us that money. We'll take care of that for you. Fuck me dead. You know what? I'll tell you what I believe in. I don't believe in this god fucking fictional character uh, that was nailed to a cross of a fucking beard, okay? Which is just a fucking book that someone fucking wrote a long time ago. I believe there is a creator, okay? But I don't see it as a god. It's a creator. Someone created all this shit. You know what I mean? But it's not some bearded man nailed to a fucking cross, man. That's just... You know, like I said, What's the only thing that doesn't get pinched in a hotel room? Is a fucking Bible. Has anyone ever fucking stolen a Bible before? The Catholic Church runs the Philippines. Yeah, I heard that. Stay out of churches, man. They're fucking evil. Richest organizations in the world. Money's evil. Tax free. Yeah, religion is the biggest killer on the fucking planet, mate. I'm not religious. I know. I know. I don't pray. I don't fucking go to church. I <laughs> still the Bibles and throw them in the trash. Good for fire starters. Hmm? In the States, they... But, not a kid. They move them to another town. All these priests and stuff are fucking the kids and shit, mate. You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck is going on in that fucking church? The choir boys and stuff, fucking them in the asses, mate. You know? And they say nuns are fucking virgins. Fuck off. They're getting fucked by the priest too. Morning, Mike. How are you today? It's a big business. <laughs> How many of you guys are in the Philippines at the moment? I just want to know. Just give us a yes if you're in the Philippines at the moment. Another day, another drama. It's always a drama. Yep, Michael's in the Philippines. Two people that are in the Philippines. Be there in two weeks. Might be, might be. See, it wears off the novelty day. Like, it doesn't feel like I'm on holiday anymore. It feels like, you know, because I've been here for a year now. I've been in Angeles City for five years. It's a long time. I think I've flipped it in Canada to say count. Well, do you come back for visits, Brian? Yeah, Mike, the first show, but it was a bit of technical difficulties there, but, you know, it's all right for a first show. And a wife and had a daughter. I've got a baby on the way too, guys. You know, fucking, I wasn't planning that. Like this one girl. Send a 10k a month to doctor's appointments. Are fucking these doctors? Like in my country, you don't go to the doctor that many times here. They, the doctors just insist that they always have to come in. Let's be Kev. We know you were here for a long time. Kev, let me ask how much money did you come over with? I think I was looking at your Facebook and you had a big wad of fucking notes on a table. Was that your money that you bring over here when you first come over? or 
Or is that just a photo? Look like a fucking couple hundred grand. Next year, 2019, Brian. Yep, I've got a little JJ coming along. Don't know if it's a boy or a girl yet. She's four months now. Four months pregnant. And, um... I've done the first ultrasound, but it was only... You can't really tell what, what it is. But I pay for all them fucking vitamins that they don't really fucking need. You know what I mean? As long as you eat good. And she does eat good, because I pay for all the food. I send her money every fucking week. Forty thousand. Is she? Well, is she in Yeah, she just she lives down the road in a place called Algao. It's about an hour and a half away on the bus. Met a family and stuff, they're right people. Yeah. It's cost me about 10,000 a month. But you remember, she lives at her mum and dad's, they own the place there, they got no rent, right? So she's on 10,000 a month. You know what I mean? They work all month and only make like 5,000, you know what I mean? So if you get 10,000 for sitting at home, my fucking child in it, fuck, that was hot. My child in her stomach, she's getting 10 fucking K a month. Watching TV, Showtime and stuff like that. So I opened up, went and opened up a bank account for her. And it's just easy for me, I can just transfer it straight to the bank account so I don't have to go to this fucking remittance company, so I fucking hate that shit. No, I don't think there is for her. She's a bit of a, um, I don't know, she's, she's not for me anyway. She's a bit standoffish. So you'd probably think, oh, well, Jay, how do you know it's yours? Well, <laughs> here's the kicker. She's a fucking virgin, mate. And uh, she didn't leave my sight for fucking two months and then bang, pregnant. Like, bah. Can't deny it, you know. Yeah, you can't put land in the kid. I've already looked into that. You can't put land in the kid's name until they're over 18. So trust me, I looked into that. <laughs> you have to be over 18. The best way to do it, look, if you're going to do it, man, go to the lawyer, get an absolute power of attorney, I turn that fucking thing off. She's hot. Get an absolute power of attorney and a 99 year lease. Okay? If you're going to buy land in a Filipino. That basically stops them from selling it and profiting off it. That means you have the power to stop it from happening. And people might say, oh, that doesn't work. Well, it fucking does, because my mates that own a few bars have got it done and it fucking works. They've been going for eight years and had no problems. <coughs> That's how I'd do it anyway if I was going to buy land. Yeah, but the most important is get the absolute power of attorney. You need that document. 
that means you have to you have to sign that document for that land to be sold. So even though it's in her name, you've got the absolute power over it. It's got an absolute power of attorney. A lot of people get that done here. Absolute power to it. 99 in your lease, you can just rip that up. You know what I mean? But you have that on top of the absolute power of attorney. So when you get the land, right? Obviously the land's gonna be in her name. The house can be half, half, half yours, half hers. Okay? And then you get the absolute power of attorney over the land and the house, and then get a 99 year lease through the lawyer. Man, his air conditioner is still going, man. He's still sleeping. I tell you, I reckon he'll sleep to 1 o'clock. What is it now? Let's have a look. It's going on 12 o'clock now. That motherfucker is a sleeper. I'm telling you, he's a fucking sleeper. He'll sleep for a hurricane. Oh, shit. See, I wouldn't mind um, buying some land here and building some units, but. Like I said, it's, it's very hard to find a trustworthy girl and if you do break up, you know, even though you've got all that stuff in place, it's still, it's still a fucking headache, mate, you know what I mean? They'll try and take your shit. Face runner, I'm not sure about that, mate. So your wage is the same, it's bullshit. Yet they can come to our country and buy land and own a business, but we can't come home and do that. You know, what the fuck is that? You know what, I reckon our governments need to stand up and say, you can't have land in our country. You can't start a business here either. They go, why? You say, because we can't do it in yours. So as soon as you change your fucking rules, we'll change our rules. Then we've got China coming into fuck Australia buying up all the fucking land every day. Where's your friend Gogo Bebe? Comes in here, he's gonna get blocked. Just for the fucking sake of it. Yeah, I reckon they should do something like that, eh? Say, look, if you go if we can't buy land in your country, then you can't buy land in our country. It's fucking why 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 and all of Asia's like this. We're not just talking Philippines. We're talking China, Thailand, Vietnam, everywhere. All Chinese, anything Asian. You can't buy land in their fucking country. And own a business. Just it's fucking bizarre, but they can come to ours and do it. I don't get it. But obviously, there's ways around it, as we know. You fucking, but you just you don't feel a hundred percent that it's yours. You know what I mean? And it's a big investment. Even though land and houses are cheaper here and stuff, still you you'd be forking out a good hundred thousand dollars for a decent house and land here. You know, a good house, a good western house and a good chunk of land, you're looking at about a hundred thousand, you know what I mean, probably more, you know, but still a quarter, one quarter of the price of what you pay in my country, you're looking for four, five hundred, six hundred thousand for a decent house and land. But still, you don't want to lose that sort of money. Like I said, you guys know that if you watch my previous videos and, and stuff, I've had, I've had businesses here and I've fucking I've lost on it, you know, but it wasn't much, you know, it was only like three grand, you know, imagine losing fucking 50 grand or 100 grand or something like that, you know. On a business. There's one guy that um, started up a, uh, I don't know if you guys know Shabu, if you know um, Planet X. My friend that owns a bar here knows the guy that actually started that up with a girl. And man, he spent a lot of money, something like 8,000 pesos or something, I think it was. I think. But I know it was a lot of money, it's a big club. And she took the lot. She took the car was in her name, the condo was in her name. She took the condo, the car, and the fucking club. We're talking over, probably, probably going in almost 15,000 pesos. Or 15, million pesos. Million.
Philippines is nuts in a lot of ways with the government rules. It's all in these son's names. Yeah. Risky business, man. Risky doing business here. Risky, 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 risky. You know, I seen the other day uh, on Facebook, Matt Wilkie actually fucking shared it. There was a call center with 500 employees um, scamming foreigners online. And they arrested the guys, and there were two white guys that were running the call center. No shit, 500 Filipinos on the phone, on the internet, creating fake profiles and scamming fucking foreigners for money. How could you have fucking have an operation like that and think you're gonna get away with it? Fucking stupid. Fuck me. They wanna talk. Oh, this we rip people off. What do you do for them? Like, oh, we're in this call center and all we do is create these fake profiles and rip off foreigners. They pay us well. That's fucking get around real quick to the police. Her wife's a shop of all cash. I had a good friend from Canada actually. He was an Australian, he married an Australian girl. He was a skier, an Olympic skier. Mark Ludbrook. There's a lot of Filipinos in Canada. Isn't there? There's a lot of Filipinos in Australia. Fuck, my next door neighbour was Filipinos. Two of them. Three of them, sorry. I had one beside me, one across the road, and one next to the other guy across the road. All had Filipino wives. This is back when we were kids. Because we used to play with their kids, you know what I mean? When we were younger. This guy next door, though, he was a fucking asshole to his wife. This is a real cunt. But she stuck by him. She ended up in the house in the end. He died of cancer. And she ended up in the house. And by that time, the house was worth over 700000 She sold it and went back to the Philippines. So she went back there millionaire. Multi-millionaire. They wouldn't give me a loan on a motorbike, so I had my girlfriend buy it, and she didn't have a job income, like my SSD check. Yeah, a lot of people do that here. They just get their girlfriend to go in and get the loan for it. I'd rather make cash. If you get the loan there, you're paying double. You know what's stupid here too as well? You can't, like, my internet here, it's on a plan obviously, it's you got the Wi-Fi hooked up through the phone system and all that sort of shit. But as a foreigner you can't you can't get it. So Globe have come here, right? They've rocked up with their representative and they said, Oh, we'll just put in another Filipino's name. I said, Who? They said, We'll find one for you, it's gonna cost you five hundred pesos. So I said, Yeah, right, oh here you go. So they go find some other guy and put the fucking internet in his fucking name. There's not even my fucking name. And this is the representatives, the salespeople, they do it all for you. But they should have plans for, for foreigners that come here that are long term. They should, you know, fuck, a six month plan or a three month plan or something like that. You know? Even if you have to pay it all up front. Fuck, I'd do that. I think it'll cost you under fucking 10k and you've got six months worth of fucking internet. Why not? That face runner, that's why everyone needs an offshore trust company. No government can touch you. Whereabouts offshore though? Where are you thinking?
Where's a good place offshore to have an offshore trust company? I'm interested to know. In Malta, Jay. Hmm, interesting. Why Malta? Why is there laws different there? Hong Kong tax refuge for foreign investors. Yeah, I know that. I actually registered a company in Hong Kong. Wait one second guys, I'm just going to get some cigarettes. I'll be back, I'll be black.
था You guys try to hide stuff from wives. Hide your money. Oh, I didn't crypt that. Yeah, that's it. Why Bitcoin? Ugh, it's better than dollar. Still talking about these offshore fucking accounts, guys. Alright, what are you talking about? We're going troll shit, I guess. Ah, uh, Thunder, I'm planning. But if I'm gone, I'll be gone for a month or so. i come back, I'll just pay the rent up here and lock the place up and turn the fridge down low and off I go. Can't wait to see me dog though. Oh, I miss that dog. Oh, it's hot. See, Barry's still sleeping, mate. It's the air conditioning still going. I just checked. And he's out. Oh, I wish it was cold here. Well, that's right, you're in Adelaide, aren't you? <laughs> Thunder, you're in Adelaide, right? story. Now this story could be fact, fiction, or could be just fucking made up, okay? You guys are going to have to piece it all together. A long time ago, when we were about 15, 16 years old, 
have been raining in the Northern Territory for three weeks. And when it rains for about three weeks, you go out to the cattle yards and you can pick magic mushrooms off the cow shit. So one of my friends comes around, he says, Jay, there's all us boys there, there's about seven of us. He goes, let's go to the Bangtang yards and pick these gold tops, the blue moonies and stuff. I had never tried this shit before. I said, well, what's it doing? I trip out. I said, really? So anyway, we grab our shopping bags, plastic bags, and we head off to the Bangtang Yards and it was, you had to go there just before the sun was going up. And you can just see all these gold tops, mushrooms. So we had shopping bags full of these fucking mushrooms. And we take them back to my mate's house. His mum was away for the weekend. And so what we do is we uh, grab a big pot, you put all the mushrooms in the pot and you boil it. And the water just goes black, like tar. It's all the strychnine in it. So then you get a rinser and you rinse the water through. So you catch all the mushrooms and you throw that away. And what you got is this hot black water. So then you grab coffee and sugar, get about five teaspoons of coffee, put it in a cup, about five teaspoons of sugar to make it really strong. And you tip the water and you mix it around. Don't put milk in it. And it just tastes like a black coffee, you know what I mean? And then uh, you drink the fucking shit. So we drink the shit, and we're sitting back on the couch. This is when the Spice Girls come, first came out. So this is a long time ago. So we're sitting there in the lounge room. There's about four of us boys in there on mushrooms. Some of the lads didn't want to take them. And I'm sitting there, and, and no shit, the walls just started breathing and you know, growing fur on the walls and shit like that. And the Spice Girls on the TV are watching it. And the other mates, they're smoking weed. He's smoking bombs at the same time. So we're sitting there smoking weed. And the fucking Spice Girls were flying out of the fucking TV, man. Like, it was just fucking intense. And we're sitting there, and we're looking around for one of our mates, Matty. He's the same guy, the other story I told you about. He always gets into trouble when he gets on the drugs. He wanders off, man. And we're like, where's fucking Matty, you know? And we're fucked and freaking out. I was thinking, he must be freaking out too as well. Where is he? We're worried about the guy. The next minute we hear this rumbling coming up the street and I thought it was a fucking tank. Like a fucking tank man, that's how loud this thing was coming up the street. And what it was, was the fucking, the old F-100 fucking, uh, the old Ford F-100 fucking <laughs> ambulance, V8, coming up the fucking street, right? And then I've looked outside, because the couch was here and, and the, the door was here, and I looked outside and I said, fuck! I said, I said to him, mate B, I said, B man, there's a fucking ambulance out the front. And everyone's just freaking out. I said, what? And I said, and, and Maddie's out there talking to him. And mate Maddie, he's obviously out on mushrooms. <laughs> anyway, I'm looking out the door, and these two ambulance workers are there with their fucking bags with all their shit and that, and they're coming out and they're talking to Maddie, and Maddie's going, there's me, and there's four other guys inside on the verge of death. That's <laughs> what so said to him, on the verge of death. So these ambulance officers are just bolted inside, they put the bags down, they look at us, you guys all right? And we're smoking bombs. I said, yeah, we're all right, but I don't think Matty is, because he was fucked, <laughs> right? So there was nothing wrong with us, we were fine, right? It was just Matty was tripping out. And back then, we didn't even have mobile phones, so we are trying to work out how he called the ambulance. Apparently, he went next door. This is the next day or so, he told us. He went next door, he reckons he knocked on the people's door and said, oh, quick, call an ambulance for me. There's me and these other guys here, they're dying, you know? And we weren't dying at all, we were just freaking out. And he reckons the person at the door just fell into a million pieces on the ground. And he just went, ah, oh! freaked out, and went outside, and the ambulance rocked up. So anyway, I said, it's not us, it's Matthew. He, he, he needs to, you need to see about him. So they've taken him into the kitchen, and they just, you gotta eat, you gotta eat. They just kept feeding him wheat bix and wheat bix and wheat bix to get it out of his system and shit. And we're still sitting there smoking bombs, right, in front of these fucking ambulance workers. And we're looking at Maddie and we're going, you fucking idiot, why the fuck did you call the fucking ambulance? I said, that's 500 bucks, you know, you call an ambulance to your fucking house in Australia if you ain't got fucking insurance. So that was that story. So but it could be fact, could be fiction, could be made up, but don't let the truth get in the way of a good yarn. All right? That was experience on mushrooms. Most of these stories are always drug related. Mm. But when you're freaking out on some sort of fucking narcotics, 
and your friend calls you a fucking ambulance and there's nothing wrong with you, that freaks you out. It's believable. <laughs> Is that the guy who pooped in the tub? That's him! He does some mad shit man and he gets off his face. He's always the one. Does some crazy shit. <laughs> the poop to the tub. That was the funniest thing, man. Tell me, you had to be there to fucking. Yeah, it was funny, but it was disgusting. This was a trip back in the day. Yeah, this is back in the day. I'm talking when we didn't even have mobile phones, man. This is when I was 15, 16 years old. We had, a, we had a mate that fucking was driving taxis and he'd fucking he'd pick us up and we're on streams and take us through the car wash and we we're like, oh shit! It's freaking out the car wash. You, know, the, you drive through it, all the things are fucking roller things are coming across the window and that and we were just freaking out in the back seat, man. We are just laughing. <laughs> the good old days. Oh, we don't do that anymore, though. <coughs> i tell you this one story one time, which is pretty weird. Not really funny, but just weird, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, was, I, was, I was... We're in our... We're in our 20s, I think it was. And I got a phone call. And this is on the telephone at home. Because we never made my phone, right? And it was my friend from grade five, right? And um, he goes, Jay, it's Terry. And I went, oh, how you going, mate? It's fucking a long time. You know, I haven't seen you since grade five because he ended up moving down south and stuff. He goes, man, I need you to do something for me. I said, what's that? He goes, go to this address, right? In Moyle, this is the suburb. There's a car, there's an old Datsun. It's black, it's parked out the front of this house, all right? It's got a little light inside that shines to make it look like it's got an alarm. There's no alarm. The fucking back door will be open, pop down the seat, and there'll be fucking two pounds of pot in there. I said, are you fucking serious? He goes, yeah, man, just go get it. I said, all right. So me and my friends, we got our push bikes, rode over there in the middle of the night, and sure enough, there was this fucking black dats in there, man. And the fucking back door was open and we pulled down the fucking thing and there was two pounds of fucking pot in there. No shit. We sold that too. And smoked a bit of it, but fuck it was unreal. That's the last I ever heard of it. <laughs> Driving an LSD while dodging the leaves blowing across the road. Yeah, I remember those days. Superman double dips. You know what's funny though with LSD? Um, back when we were younger and shit. It's like if you're sitting there with a group of a group of friends and stuff and you're all on it and shit, you know exactly what each other's thinking. You just have to look at each other and you know exactly what each person's thinking. It's fucking bizarre. They reckon it opens up the penal gland in your brain, you know? You know they say we only use 10% of our fucking brain apparently. But yeah, man, you just look at your friend and it's like you're fucking, you know, you're thinking the exact same fucking thing, man. It's bizarre. That freaked me out. Tripping balls and that shit. I don't see that much anymore. Yeah, in tune with each other, it's fucking bizarre. Yeah, you can understand why back in the day, the fucking Woodstock and all that, and the hippies and that, the 60s were tripping fucking hard on that shit. Well, I must say, if you are worried about something and you've got a bit of stress on your mind, I wouldn't recommend taking that shit because that's all you'll be thinking about. You have a bad trip. But if you're happy and nothing's, nothing's wrong, you pretty much have a good trip. Did they used to give it to the fucking... Uh, back in the war day, back in the... What was it? World War One or two? I don't know what it was. Uh, they used to fucking give it to the soldiers uh, they get the truth out of them or some shit. And they used to feed up the, I think Hitler was, used to feed up the fucking soldiers on speed so they can fucking, which is basically methamphetamine, to keep them going for days and days and fighting and stuff like that. 
So these drugs have been around for a fucking long time, man. You know what I mean? A long time. Good frame of mind when you drop. Yeah, exactly. If you're not a good frame of mind, don't do any of that shit. Because you're going to have one bad fucking trip. Yeah, speed, amphetamine, like, not good for you, but fuck, they'll give it to soldiers, mate, so I'll just keep fighting for days and days. Hovering and driving on ecstasy. You know, back in the day, man, I don't know if you guys seen that movie in Australia called Underbelly. Uh, which is a true story. Have you guys ever seen that? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just a beer man now, mate. This is back in the day. We're talking fucking... Fuck. 25 years ago. Yeah, Wonderbelly. Well, Remember the guy that used to make all the ecstasy in Melbourne and stuff? Which is a true story. When he was making that shit, man, that shit used to come up through Victoria and fucking basically into all the other states, man. That's when it was, the, that's when it was good. It was strong actually gave you a bit of a kick. And after he got arrested and shit like that, he ended up getting killed in jail. It all uh, it all stopped after that. The good stuff stopped, it was all shit. Good series that though, under Mr. Mitsubishi's, <laughs> the green Mitsubishi's. I remember those fucking things. I don't used to go to raves, man, like out in the fucking country, Victoria. Yeah, and they had the Green Mitsubishi there, man. It was on the uh, the Murray River there in uh, Cobram, on the border of uh, New South Wales and Victoria. The whole fucking, man, it, was, it had to be over a thousand people there. And every single person was fucking on Green Mitsubishi. And they had this fucking generators and just raid. Just, oh, man, it was insane. Meth lead. Yeah, I remember. It's not like that anymore, though. It's all changed. <coughs> you know what's funny, though, when you're on fucking ecstasy? This is what I noticed when I used to go to nightclubs when I was younger. The girls know you're on it, man. They know you're fucked up on it. And you're just sitting there by yourself, you know? all your friends, you know, you just mind your own business. You're not chasing girls around. You're watching these blokes just chasing girls all over the dance floor, trying to get them. It's just unreal. And because you're just off your face, you're just watching this with a big smile on your face. It's like the girls know you're on it. They just, they just come to you, man. They just come to you and just fucking sit behind you, start touching and shit. You're like, what the fuck? Is this really happening? Heroin, yeah, that's bad shit. I would never do that. You know, guys, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you, man. I've tried a few things before in my life, but I'll never, ever stick needles in my arm. Fuck that shit. I'll never touch heroin. I've seen bad shit in Australia, what it does to people and stuff like that. That's a bad drug. I've seen a lot of girls go downhill real quick on that sort of stuff. That's one thing I won't, I won't, I won't do. We used to put Vicks Vapor Rub on then Go to the black trash, black trip on out. <laughs> yeah, but that heroin, man, that, that's a nasty fucking drug. Well, they reckon they're hooked straight away from first. Well, they can't, they can't get that high that they got from the first hit. So they're chasing the drag and they're always trying to, and then, then before you know it, they're hooked on it and they, they just need that shit. I remember one girl I met, Right, and she was a cool girl. She was a rich girl, you see, so she didn't have to whore herself or, you know, she wasn't trashy looking and stuff like that. She had a very rich father, but she was hooked on heroin. Her dad would give her like fucking 500 bucks a day and she'd spend it on fucking heroin. And she was, and she worked too as well, man, this girl. She was, she just looked like a normal girl, very pretty, but she was hooked on that shit, man. She was a friend of mine. I said, what are you fucking doing, you know? And she tried to do that methadone thing too as well. But that they last too long, they'll do it for a month or two and then they, they run back to the fucking heroin every time. I don't think, what is it, one in a 99, what is it, one percent 
I know, it's something like a small fraction of people that have actually ever got off it. You know? Heron really bad in the States now. Yeah, let's... I think it comes from Saigon, isn't it? And fucking... Afghanistan and shit, doesn't it? 1%, yeah. Yeah, it's very hard for people to get off that shit, man. Pretty sad, though. But... That's, that's, heroin is one drug, like, get me, oh, I smoke pot, snort the old coke, take some ecstasy, a little bit of LSD here and there, you know what I mean, just take some mushrooms and shit, but I knew, man, as a kid, you know, they say marijuana is a gateway to all drugs, that's bullshit. Um, I knew, man, as a young fella, never, ever, ever, ever fucking touch heroin, man. That is a dirty fucking drug. USA pays them to go to methadone clinics. Well, it's taxpayers' money, man. It's a problem. I almost lost my daughter to that shit. Yeah, it's fucked up, man. A lot of people have lost their fucking... They just go crazy, man. They just... You know, especially if they've got the money for it, man. They will... They'll... You know, they'll... Steal off their own family, man. It's from Afghanistan and Southeast Asia, flown into Mexico, then smuggled into the US. Mm. No, don't play with opiates. See, I, I, um, like I've seen people when they're on it. I've been fucking Melbourne, right, at the fucking, in St Kilda, at a pub, playing the pokey machines, and there's a guy beside me on heroin, you can tell. He's playing the pokey machine like this, and he's going, and he goes... <laughs> he, just, he just passes out, right? In the middle of the fucking free spins. <laughs> and about fucking ten minutes later, he's like... Oh. And he's playing again. He's not drunk, man. He's on the nod. goes on the nod, man. I think, fuck, how can, how can you take something that makes you... Because they go to... Like, I've seen this girl, and she, she fucking takes the shit. She just... They just go lay down and they just, they go to sleep basically, man. I said, what sort of drug do you get a kick out of fucking going to fucking sleep, man? I'm more of an upper. <laughs> Methadone was made during World War II by Hitler. What was it made for, though? Michael, what was, what was it made for? I know it doesn't work. They'll get on it for a while and they they morphine. We had this uh, bully man when we were fucking... Um, I was around 25, 26. This is when I was right into the weights and that and training and stuff like that. It's a big fucking bully cunt, man. He used to... His dad was sick and used to get that uh, morphine shit and he'd crush up the tablets and fucking bang him up his arm and just go fight people, this guy. Like, he, 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 he'd smash car windows with his fist and drag people out of the fucking car and beat the fuck out of them and shit. This guy used to do this for years and pick on us and shit like that. And one time I went to this party and he was there and he was on that shit, man. And he, he started on me and, and my mate, Maddie was the one that took the poop in the bathtub. He's my best friend, actually. He was always jeering me up. He's going, Jay, man, you can beat this guy. I'm telling you, you can do it. You can do it, you can take him, man. And he sort of jeeved me up to do it, man, and fucking he, I knew he was going to start on me at this party, so he had a go at me, and I fucking just got up. Man, smashed a bin over this guy's fucking head. And it was full of VB bottles, a big steel bin. Smashed it over his fucking head. His eye was hanging out, blood everywhere. Man, I pounded this guy this hard, and because of his morphine, he just kept getting up, man. Just kept getting up, up, and it was like he didn't feel the pain at all, man. And it uh, got to the point where... He didn't even get a punch on me, to be honest. But he was just a mess. And at the end, my friends had to drag me off and just put me in the car and say, just go, Jay. But he just, because he's on that morphine, man, he just kept getting up and up. He just wouldn't stay down, man. He was a big boy, but that morphine shit, man, obviously doesn't feel the pain and stuff. But he was a fucking absolute mess. But I was getting tired towards the end, you know what I mean? 
This fight went on for fucking half an hour. You try fighting for fucking half an hour, man. Eventually, a year later after that, he overdosed on the shit. And was in one of my mate's lounge rooms. He was dead on the beanbag watching the fucking TV, dead with a needle coming out of his fucking arm. Charming. Yeah, beat yourself up exhaustion, but that's it. Uh, yeah, I have been offered drugs here. Usually in a, uh, what's it called? Mango Square. It's usually pot though, man. I just go, no, no, I'm right, thanks. Because you don't, I don't trust them, man. You don't know them, you know. They could be just, oh yeah. You get it off them and then police officer comes over and fucking arrest you. So I'm not that fucking stupid. No matter how drunk I am and how keen I'm like, oh, I wouldn't mind puffing on that joint right now. I just go, no, mate, I'm right. And just jump in the taxi and go. My friend got done like that in Bali. Um, the thing is, it was his, it was his first day in Bali, right? He comes out of a fucking bar. He's pissed. Guy sells him fucking um, weed. He walked fucking not even 10 meters and the cops just grabbed him, man. It was all set up. They took him to the ATM machine. Didn't take him to the police station. Took him to the ATM machine and make him empty. There's something like 10 fucking grand or something, man, off his credit card. Just emptied the fucking lot. All of it. They just kept it there, kept getting them, put the money in, kept, get it out, get it out, get it out. He ended up having to call his parents to get him to pay for a ticket to get him home. But, better than going to fucking jail there, man. Fuck that. Yeah, so don't ne never ever take fucking drugs in foreign countries, man. Ever. You know? You don't know who's setting you up. You know, they make more money out of setting you up than fucking selling it to you. You know, it's cheap. It's cheap here. You know, why, why would they care about 500 pesos, 1,000 pesos or whatever, and they could set you up and extort fucking 30, 50, 60, 100,000 pesos out of you, you know what I mean? So I, I, don't, I don't touch drugs again. Bank banks usually shut down your card, or at least limit that what you can withdraw. No, man, if you've got a credit card, you can take it as much as you want. You can take it as much as you want. It's not like a, a debit card or your bank card where you limit to a thousand a day. You can take out more than that. You get a credit card. They'll let you take out what you want. That's if you let the banks know before you go, you know. You can tell me I'll be in another country, not worry. I see a guy buy weed in Mexico, then got arrested. Pot dealer got a finder's fee for calling it. Man, that's fucking shit. What a shitty thing to do to someone, eh? That makes me mad. That's shitty, man. Shit. Like, yeah, I couldn't do that to someone, you know? I really couldn't. Sell them weed and then go run to the fucking police. Cancun. That's a party fucking joy, isn't it? Cancun. That's a shitty thing to do to a person, man, even if, you know, look, if I was born here, I'd find ways. There's a lot of rich Filipinos here. There's a lot of people with a lot of money here, man. All right? There's big houses around here. These people are fucking poor, but the majority of the population is poor. I'd find a way to make money, I always have in my life, no matter what fucking nationality I was. But I would not set up a foreigner and sell them something and go run to the police. That's just a fucking dog act, man. It really is. We got weed from a guy with a monkey on his shoulders in Cancun. Dude basically walked to the beach, dug up sand and pulled out a brick inside a Tupperware container. <laughs> so he was all cool. One of my other mates went to jail in Bali for a fucking joint that they had with a taxi driver and they threw on the beach and the police come back with the, to the hotel with the, the joint, the roach, and arrest them. And he got like eight months in a Bali fucking prison. And so the taxi driver. And 
You know? It's like that Chappelle Corby bullshit, man. Remember that fucking story? Man, that is so unbelievable. Who the fuck takes a pound of pot in their boogie bag to fucking Bali from Australia? You can't sell it and make any more money off it. They're not going to pay that price as what they pay in Australia. It was a fucking total setup, man. It's so unbelievable it's not funny. And we pay them cunts, the Indonesians, millions in fucking aid every year. I don't know what, what the fuck for. Locked up abroad. Yeah, I think I've seen that actually. Can I have YouTube? You should see they locked up this guy, man. He was a surfer, a Australian guy, and he went to Bali. And he broke something in the hotel, like a door or something. It was something stupid. And they kept on saying, oh, you're going to pay this much. And the price just kept going up and up and up. And more police officers come and the price kept going up. He said, oh, well, fucking put me in jail. I haven't got the money. He done a couple of years for that. Or banged up abroad. Yeah, I've, I've seen that shit. In Mexico, let, let you get away with lots of shit, smoke weed, etc. But yet guys told us not to get caught pissing on a sidewalk or a building and leaving a bar. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah. It's like here, they piss everywhere here. Yeah, it's gonna be a worse thing though, isn't it? Boys get fucking locked up abroad. Just get locked up, man. I'll be locked up in fucking Australia. <laughs> That's not fucking good. You know, let alone be in another country. They're fast boats. Indonesia's that close, you can just about fucking swim to the place. But I wouldn't go there, man. I've been there, well, I was there for three weeks. It's a fucking shithole, mate. I'm telling you. The people there, it, it, the women ain't even good looking. The people there are fucking rude. Australia is fucking Bali. Australia's made Bali, man. They spend all their fucking money there. And it's more expensive than what people think. It's not that cheap. Like, oh, Bali's cheap. Philippines is cheap. Bali's not that cheap. Oh, San Miguel there and shit like that. With their bing tag. Don't ever drink that shit, man. Headache material. I'll tell you, you wake up in the morning with the biggest fucking headache. In Mexico, I was smoking a joint and drinking a beer, and then the cop took my beer bottle and poured it into a plastic cup and kept the glass bottle. That's just bizarre. That's bizarre. It makes me wonder why these Asian countries are real strict on the fucking pot though. Yet our Western countries are not we don't really give a fuck, you know what I mean? In Nimbin. My friends went there. I've never been there. The thing is with Nimbin though, you can smoke a pipe, you can sell it, you can do whatever you want there. But it's attracted a lot of heroin addicts, they reckon. So the heroin addicts will go there, sell the pot to buy the heroin. The thing is, when you leave Nimbin and you've got a lot of weed on you, they bust you on the way out. This China used to have ships that stopped a couple of hundred kilometers of Samal and had Filipino fishermen pick up shipments of meth for them. Really? Some fishermen wouldn't show the meth inside fish boxes and within the fish markets. Worked for decades. My first time here in the 90s, the customs dock, you go out to fill trafficking drugs, punishments was death. Fuck that. Mm. So the Bali Nine, they got taken like, shot in Bali for fucking drugs, smuggling drugs back. But our own Australian authorities gave Bali the tip off. They should have just waited they got to Australia. 
in trying to set up a base in Cebu at Supervamps. I'll tell you what, that Shabu, we call it Shabu here in Australia, it's called ice. In America, what's it called? Crack cocaine or meth or whatever. That shit's everywhere, it's in every country, man. Every country's got it. They just call it something different. It's an epidemic. Fucks up a lot of people that shit, man. I've seen a lot of, especially girls, man, go from beautiful to fucking damn right ugly in less than three, four months, man, smoking that shit. time here, it's 12.38 and Barry is still in the way. Motherfucker's sleeping in. Caffeine is my drug of choice. Or beer. Let's go, I think I heard Barry. I think he's awake. Barry! Barry! I'm tapping the wall. Oh, fuck, it's hot today, man. Cracking on about his visas, he's fucking paid up. I said it last night. He's all paid up. Be on my strip of ground. Don't worry, I'll do something to him soon. It's just a matter of time. Maybe he's not awake. Fuck, he's sleeping for a long time. <laughs> Alright, boys. I think I better jump off now. It's been on two hours and 14 minutes jump off and I'll wait. Barry should be up soon as well and then we'll, we'll do another live stream with him. And then later on we'll do a uh, Google Hangouts on this channel and get some of you guys on if you want. What do you think about that? Alright, I'll talk to you later boys. Have a good one. I am out. I'm going to switch this fucking thing off.